Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Max Render Hot Tips where I'll try and highlight the little tips and tricks that may otherwise pass you by. In today's episode I'm going to be having a look at adjusting an HDRI to better suit your needs. So here I am in my scene, it's a very simple scene with these three primitives on a plane and my illumination is being provided by an HDRI and this specific HDRI comes with Maxwell Studio and if I have a little look around in my scene you can see it's a sort of dusk environment but I think that even though it's dusk this scene would look better with some shadows behind these objects being cast by the sun over there to me this scene looks bright enough that the sun would actually cast quite a large shadow and in fact you can see on the background here that indeed the objects in the image are casting quite a long shadow but the exposure detail hasn't been picked up in the HDRI so we need to adjust it so here I am in Photoshop with this HDRI open and all I'm gonna do is with the ellipse selection tool select the area of the sky where the Sun is and then I'm gonna make a new exposure adjustment layer and then increase the exposure a little bit it doesn't have to be too much, I'm only seeing what it does at the moment. But of course with this technique you're going to get a very very hard outline and that doesn't really look realistic at all. So what I'm going to do is go to my mask and increase the feather just enough so that it doesn't look quite so obvious what I'm doing. Then I need to go to File, Save As and just save it as a copy in the Radiance format and then back in Maxwell Studio select the new copy for your environment lighting and then click fire to see what it's done and as you can see the shadow isn't quite there yet so I need to put my exposure up a little bit more so back to Photoshop, back to the exposure layer increase it a bit more and then save it again and to refresh the scene in Maxwell Studio just stop the fire engine and start it again and now you can see that I'm getting a bit of a shadow and how much you increase the exposure depends on how much shadow you want I might increase it one more time okay I've done that now and here's the results I'm left with I've increased the exposure of this area of the image in Photoshop and so now Maxwell is rendering accordingly with more light coming from that area of the image and casting a shadow another hot tip is how to control the crispness of this shadow for example, if I want the edges of the shadow to be nice and hard and crisp, just like the shadows I can see in the image, then I need to go back to Photoshop and adjust the size of the area that I have selected. With a smaller size selected, the shadows should look sharper. So I'm just going to hide my first exposure adjustment layer, and then with my ellipse tool again, select a much smaller bit of the image, just where the sun is, and make a new exposure adjustment layer, and this time I might need to put the exposure up quite a way, because I'm increasing the exposure of fewer pixels. So I've put my exposure adjustment layer up to 10 and I'm not going to feather it this time and then save that image. In the radiance format, remember. And then in Maxwell Studio, select this new image. And as you can see, I've got a nice crisp shadow. However, I've now got some problems with some green by the looks of it being shown in my scene and this color cast is coming from the HDRI and it's because the pixels that I increased in exposure will have a slight green tinge to them and again this is coming from the camera equipment that was used to create the HDRI on the original low dynamic range images that were combined to make the HDRI there will always be very little color information in the very bright areas and so when the image is assembled any slight variance will be multiplied many times and this is where this slight green tinge is coming from of course this can be corrected either in post-production after the render is finished or ideally before you even start the render back in Photoshop with for example a levels adjustment layer. And that's your hot tip for this week, how to adjust an HDRI to make sure that it performs as it should. Make sure you're subscribed to get all future videos. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.